so we're going to look at uh, several, a few ideas here uh, concerning uh, exchange rates. Uh, the, f the first one I want to look at is something called an arbit arbitrage or arbitragers. Arbitragers are people who, uh, in effect, buy something in one place at a low price and then take it to another market and sell it at a higher price. So uh, the logic behind the uh, law of one price or absolute purchasing power parity is that there's people that are acting as arbitragers. Uh, I, would it be possible, for example, to buy a thousand big bags in Montreal, drive down to New York State and sell them? It's very unlikely. Uh, other than having to pay local rents and taxes and fees, and this explains in part why the law of one price or absolute purchasing power parity does not work for something like a Big Mac. Uh, however, it might work for something like gold, uh, where it's relatively easy to transport across across borders. Uh, coffee, bananas, gas, gasoline, hair, uh, 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 economists look at these kinds of questions and sometimes they refer to as something called a, a tradable good and a non-tradable good. And they expect that the absolute purchasing power parity will apply to things that are are, are, are tradable. Be cautious. Uh, some things that appear not to be a tradable, like for example a service, uh, may be. Uh, take cosmetic surgery as an example. Uh, in this case, it's not so much that the good will cross the border as the patient or the consumer will go to a place where it's relatively, relatively cheaper given the quality. Um, it, but the logic here is that as the world becomes more, let's say, globalized, where it's relatively easier to trade across borders, uh, then we would expect to see uh, a, a, long, a, a, a similar or same price everywhere once the, cha the, uh, the difference in exchange rates is taken into account. Uh, but that leads to another question. Is it correct or fair that there should be one single price for the same good everywhere in the world? In the case of a Big Mac, it's, five, six Canadian dollars. Uh, well, some people are rich in some parts of the world, some people are not. Um, in rich countries, it's easy to buy a Big Mac. Poor well, Big Mac maybe is not such a good example. How about something like kerosene? Now, kerosene is also known as jet fuel. So that means to say that kerosene in some parts of the world is used as a, as a for cooking. So uh, is it fair or correct that, for example, uh, uh, somebody who's very wealthy and flies in their own private jet, uh, in effect is buying the same good kerosene at, uh, at the same price around the world as people in a poor country are purchasing it to, uh, uh, to, to, to use for, for, for cooking. Uh, keep in mind though too that uh, what's relevant is that the price is the same and through the world price of oil it is this, the same uh, and, but then people choose to whether they're going to buy it or not. Uh, uh, the last point I want to look at is uh, uh, this question of a shock and uh, be cautious about this. Uh, I've been using absolute purchasing power parity as a way to predict the long run situation. What will happen to the aggregate demand curve in the long run once the Canadian, well, Canadian or domestic uh, currency changes value? In the short run, however, uh, there can be shocks. For example, if the Canadian dollar unexpectedly loses value, uh, because of some change in the market, the foreign exchange market, quite apart from absolute purchasing power parity, then it, as the Canadian dollar loses value, then that means E begins, becomes a larger number. And as a result, our goods become cheaper. So net exports increase. And then the aggregate demand curve in the short run would shift to the right. So keep in mind that the absolute purchasing power parity is a prediction of long run effect, whereas uh, a sudden change and the Canadian dollar can do that change very quickly leads to a short run effect. A, a way to think about this a bit is the short run are the, the shocks that occur like a storm in the ocean or a wave that hits a boat. Uh, in a storm there's many high and low waves. The long run is like saying well eventually the, 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 the storm will pass and we'll be in calm waters. Of course uh, uh, that does happen but uh, in the middle of the short run it's not very useful to say that in the long run the water will be calm.